Hey guys, I'm probably going to do, I might even do two videos on the same day, um, but I wanted to talk about something that I, I'm noticing. The more, the more I get, I get more of a macro view of the world, like the more I, well, rather, the less I connect emotionally to all the bull crap, the clearer I can see. So I have mostly, I'd say 90% of the way have disconnected from any of the drama slash trauma to do with the media and pop culture and current events and all that stuff. I, I've pulled my energy, plucked every one of my cords out of all of those places and put them back inside to where they feed and evaluate me, not a bajillion other things that will never really have anything to do with my everyday life. Um, that's not to say we don't need to know what's going on in the world. Of course we do, but you understand what I'm saying. It's, a, uh, I, I'm, I'm observing it really from strictly observational, almost as though I am here, but I am not from here. Almost as though I'm a visitor here and I'm just collecting data. That seems to be a much more comfortable vibration for me to settle into. But as I'm observing things, I'm seeing that, first of all, humans have a much stronger intuition than they've ever been allowed to know. I am observing people really do know, like deep down inside of them, they know a lot about what's going on. They've just been trained to second guess this knowledge. And they've been taught that your intuition means you're a witch or it's woo woo. I actually had somebody ask me over Easter weekend at a family event. This is why I don't go to them. <laughs> Wasn't my family, but it was family of a friend who I have on Facebook. And um, she said, yeah, sometimes I read your stuff and I just wonder, like, is she a witch or something? And she snarled her nose, like made it disgusting and, you know, creased the corners of her mouth when she said that with such disgust. And it's because, of course, I do post some interesting things, although I never do post about anything to do with any witchcraft whatsoever. Not that I have any problem with it. I don't even know if we even know what it really is. I don't know if we have a good, true definition. I know what you find when you look it up. I already did that. I'm talking, but none of that shit even, it usually barely borders on truth and it doesn't have any, any essence to it, you know? So I don't know if I, I don't know even what that would really mean, but I know that the things that I think, feel, know, believe are strictly what I can, what I download and unpack out of my own, pull out of my own DNA and I pull from the, the morphogenetic fields. That's what I know. Um, so it's nothing to do with any kind of a craft, but that's my point to that was that I follow my intuition and we have been taught that if you follow your intuition and you don't outsource your knowing to anywhere outside of you, including a Bible or to the church that, you know, there's something wrong with you and you're evil and you know, you're wicked and you know, you're going to go to hell and all that stuff. So we don't trust our intuition, but I'm seeing humans know shit. They know they can feel when something's wrong. And then you watch them second guess themselves. And like for a moment, for a fleeting second, you'll see the light flash in their eyes. Like they'll get a knowing and then immediately they'll check that against societal norms and then they'll disconnect from that and go back to the societal norm because that's where they're more comfortable. That's where they're accepted. This is their station in life. And so they, they ignore the intuition. And to that end, there is truth in almost everything as far as in all, in most news stories, 
there is some truth in them somewhere. You just have to figure out how to discern which part is true and which is not. Which 1% is true so you can throw away the other 99%. And that is part of the reason that this system is still being somewhat held together. It can't be all false because the, the, the foundations of this realm, of this reality are based in truth. It was created by the original creator. The original prime creator was beautiful and pure and was truth, was the epitome of truth. And the foundations of this reality are still based on the original builder, the original creator. So it couldn't be just taken down and reprogrammed into a completely inverted system. It can't be because the bones of it are true, are truth. So I'm just going to call that truth from here on out. So they couldn't disassemble the whole thing and put it back together completely inverted. What they had to do was leave the bones of truth and then disrupt the patterns around those bones of truth so if it weren't for those things the truth still being here we would we those of us knowers and seers connected to the frequency of truth we would be going crazy we probably wouldn't have even come here honestly if there wasn't something for us to latch on to while we're here because it's like Oh, yeah. You know how you see these rock climbers and as they're climbing down the the side of the rock, they'll find little little sections throughout, you know, the path and they'll put in their little, I can't, I the little clasp thingy, you know, to hook the rope into. I'm so sorry. I took rappelling in high school, too, and I can't remember the name of it. Eh, Anyway. Um, So as they go, they'll find a place where they anchor their clasp and put the rope in and then go further and find another anchor, another place, anchor the clasp and move down some more. So those areas of stability that they utilize on their way down are kind of what we do as we come into this realm and we operate within it. We look for areas to anchor ourselves and because we run a primary frequency of truth we look for things that are based in truth and then we won't anchor ourselves to anything that is not that yes we did in the past I don't know about y'all but I went seven kind of sideways in this reality Uh, but I actually understand why I had to do that I've always felt like there were two Lisa's inside of me And the funny thing is I was born with a dead twin. So there was me and then, you know, a fetus. And um, I've always kind of felt like that Lisa was still in me. That Lisa was part of my, I came down here split into two. And then one of them did not survive. And I I think that it it exited. Uh, It couldn't because... I was extremely high vibration, not tooting my horn. It just is what it is. I am programmed this way. This is how I I program this this avatar and this essence. I'm extremely high vibe and extremely sensitive. And I was born into a family where every devil in hell was tap dancing, you know, throughout my house. They were just, my house was a playground. And my father had beaten my mother actually when she was, when he discovered that she was pregnant with me and they assume that that is how that child died. So, but we know that there's a much more intelligent design and I would imagine that my, my twin was not, we were like, okay, we cannot do this. We can't have two of us in the same 
this is going to be a shit show. This is not going to work out. So one of us had to exit. And I think that one left some of itself with me in order to help me accomplish my mission. And I've posted about this. I don't know if I've talked about it on YouTube, but it's a, it's a slingshot maneuver. It's coming into the realm and experiencing the lowest of lows. And then as you work your way back up from the low lows, as you heal, integrate and move upward on the spiral. And again, up and down are just words because I don't have any other words for this. Um, as you move up, you, when you come from such a far distance back, it's just like pulling back an arrow, you know, the further back you pull it, the more tension it is, the more power it has when you release it. So that's very similar to what I did when I came in here. I had to get, I had to scrape the low, low. I had to touch it almost like going to the bottom of a, of a pool and touching the bottom to grab the coin and coming back up. And this Lisa, the one that is primary at this time, when I became activated, this Lisa became primary. Uh, this Lisa would never have done any of those things. This Lisa would never have partaken in any kind of unclean and impure and perverted um, perversions of the body, the mind. I that This Lisa would have never done those things. So that Lisa kind of had to drive while we experienced those things. And I often felt when I was doing those things, I hate this. Why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I, am I looking for sex with, with strange men that I think it's going to make me feel better or give, make me feel like I have value or something. I mean, I really, I really did some, you know, things that made me feel, made this Lisa extremely uncomfortable. And I would not, this Lisa would never, ever do those things. So I couldn't have scraped the bottom is what I'm trying to say with this Lisa. It had to be that Lisa. So even that served a purpose. And so we, that we come in here, we anchor ourselves to the truth. The bones of the truth are still here and the truth seeking so if you can imagine a person made of their, their heart, imagine their heart is a big bundle of glistening cords of all sorts of different colors. So if their predominant frequency is truth and they're desirous of truth and pure and good things, then one of those cords or several of those cords that you imagined in the heart, those cords reach out and they, they seek, they seek for truth to anchor to. They go out, you, they send out like, like, I guess, like little feeders, I guess. And they go out and they look for truth and they connect to it and they find more truth and they connect to it. They go out, they feel something. This is false. This is inverted. This is perverted. No, I won't create a connection to that. So, and sometimes, and in, in depending on your environment, there aren't very many things you can find to hold on to, but you do because that's how you programmed this when you came into this reality. So, the truth is still flowing here. Everything is not a lie. There's a, there's a bit of truth in almost everything. And I feel that it's very important for me to repeat that because we are very good at, you know, we basically, if you know the source, you know, consider the source, right? I've, I've said, you know, some people are expecting a healthy pomegranate to be, to come off of a rotten apple tree, you know? If it's rotten, if the tree has produced rotten fruit, you know, historically, then it's likely going to continue to produce rotten fruit because that's what it does. And 
I think that we've gotten so much to where it's like, well, I know that's a rotten tree. I know that it can't produce any, any positive fruit, um, any healthy fruit. That's true, but still examine it. Still examine the seeds. Examine it just quickly. Um, rather than assuming that it's, it's a lie or it's a perversion for, uh, straight out the gate, take two seconds to observe it. You know, give it, you know, chew on it, you know, taste it. What's the texture? You know, (laughs) is this good? Because I feel like more and more we are going to be shown truth by people who historically lied. And that's really what I'm trying to get to. They are going to start telling the truth. They really have no choice. I felt very strongly, was it Friday night, I got hit, just overwhelmed with this feeling of people who had done bad to humans. Just, you know, whatever you want to call this, this group. And I felt they are afraid. They are afraid. They are so scared because there is no hiding the truth. There really isn't. There isn't. And this truth feels like it's, it's, she feels like she's speaking through me right now. The truth is almost a personified deity that I'm perceiving in, inside of my belly right now. And, and she feels that as though what she is trying to express is that she says, I am always here. Always. I'm everywhere. I am everywhere. The, you, you cannot destroy me. You cannot take the fervor out of me and the flavor out of me. I am beautiful and rich. I'm, I'm rich when I need to be rich and I'm coarse when I need to be coarse. The truth is not always friendly. It's not always fluffy. It's not always comfortable. But it stands on its own and it cannot be destroyed. She's explaining to me every where you look, you will find you will find uh, edification. You want to be edified by the truth, then magnify the truth. Make it be your primary homing beacon, basically. Just send out that energy from your heart space that I want to encounter all of this truth that Lisa's telling me is here. And I know she's here because she's speaking through me. You just have to set your beacon your heart, your heart space, that's your beacon. Set it to go and seek out truth. And, and because we have a habit, and, I, and I, there's a reason for me saying this, because you're like, well, of course I always want to know the truth. I already do that. Well, we have a habit of more passionately identifying the lie. I don't like to hear this about myself and this is about me too. I'm not really speaking as Lisa as much right now. And, um, I'm seeing it for myself as well. We have a tendency to go out and find the lie. We seek out the lie because it proves our point, right? They're liars. Okay. Asked and answered. They're liars. Next question, your honor, you know, now what if we shift gears and we begin now to take that energy we were using to find the lies, cleanse that from outside of us, breathe it out, cleanse it from inside of us, breathe it out, push it out, take that program. Thank you. You served me. You served me. You taught me a lot. Thank you. Now, I'm going to take that energy and command that it go out and find truth for me. 
and draw that truth into me. That's what I want to spend my energy on. And I think that that's an important step for all of us to take right now. And I also want to repeat one more time before I stop yapping that the truth is speaking loud and clear that she is about to shine. I mean, shine. I, the way that I see it right now, I'm trying to find human words for it, but it's like I'm driving down the road and I'm seeing trees and, you know, all sorts of vegetation. And the way she's showing it to me is like, if you were to take the tip off of a leaf all of one of the off of one of these trees and open it up to its its atomic structure just that tiny little bit would would unpack hundreds of terabytes of truth like everything is teeming with it it's just I'm watching the things around me, the geo- geometric structures of the things that we see as third dimensional. They're not. And I, well, I guess that's because how this, this avatar, this interface uh, interprets it. But it is geometric code. And it's just, it's almost turning inside out. I'm watching it. It's not with my eyes, with my physical eyes. It's very difficult to explain this. I'm looking at things with my physical eyes, but I'm perceiving it differently inside of my heart, in my belly. And I'm watching all of this code that was like buried in shadows and darkness. I'm watching it blossom, like turn inside out, like turn itself inside out and beam. This is what I really am. This is what you really are. Like it's passionately, it's time. It's the the time is now for truth, for everything to be uncovered. And that doesn't mean that it's all uncovered for all of the world. That's that, that, that it cannot be your hallmark or your benchmark for when, when is everyone going to know? It's not going to be everyone's going to know. It's you are going to know. Your neighbor is going to know. Your family, your friends, each individual as they know. That's where we create and ultimately will create the 100th monkey. It's for you to find out the truth. We don't need to try to make other people see the truth anymore. We need to set our beacons to finding truth. And as we do it, as we integrate this and download it into our avatar, our avatar is like a tower. It's like a, a cell tower, a radio tower. It broadcasts. So once you, you pull it into your body and you integrate it as truth, you will broadcast it. And then other people will be able to pick it up. And that's how everyone's going to know. But the goal for us needs to be today, seek the truth, pull it into your body, and then it will broadcast to those who are a match for you, who, who are in your swath. So I feel like there's probably, this is going to be painful for some people, but victorious for other people. Bottom line is stay in your ground, seek the truth, bear down into, bear down into your truth, your true construction, bear down into that. I love you guys. I hope this made sense. I try my best to to say it the way that I feel it, but sometimes I think I could do better. But anyways, I love you so much.